Good morning. This is Faith in Our Hometown, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. And now, here's your host, Father Jay Friedel. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another Sunday morning of Faith in Our Hometown. Uh, we're getting ready. It's, we're mid-August. We're getting ready for schools to start. We're getting ready for... Uh, all kinds of exciting things to happen here in the next few weeks. And uh, one of those things, of course, that's always happened in my life uh, for the last number of years is I know we're getting ready to start the university up again. And so uh, we wanted to do a university-themed show as we were getting ready for the beginning of the school year. And so I've invited uh, Missouri Southern's um, you know, head football coach, Jeff Sims, to be here with us uh, this morning. And we're going to talk a little bit about... Uh, well, just what's going on at Southern a little bit in the sports program, but also then how do we kind of get everybody geared up uh, to head themselves forward to create a winning culture? Uh, it's been a big challenge in his life, of course, and again, for all of us, we need to work on that uh, in, in so many aspects of life, and you do that as a coach. So we're going to be back to talk to our head coach uh, at Missouri Southern, Jeff Sims, right after this Mercy Minute. Stick around. We'll be right back. The dreaded tagged photo. I married the love of my life in October, and when I got home that night, I saw this. Frankly, this is every obese person's worst nightmare. You have no control, none, over what other people post. And up until that day, I'd been very careful about how I presented myself on social media. In fact, I generally only posted photos like this. What's sad is that I haven't always been like this. Confession, I've been a yo-yo dieter for roughly 10 years. When I met this amazing guy three years ago, he didn't care how much I weighed, but he did care about my health. A month after our wedding, I talked to my doctor and my journey began. Here's an honest and usually pretty entertaining look at how I got to bariatric surgery and beyond. Buckle up, check out my blog, Confessions of a Yo-Yo Dieter. Well, again, welcome back for another Sunday morning here at Faith in Our Hometown. My guest this morning, Jeff Sims, is the head football coach over at MSSU. Uh, welcome to you this morning. Uh, thanks for coming in. I don't do very many sports-oriented uh, uh, shows for whatever reason, but we just decided we, uh, to, that this would be fun for a change uh, as we start a new school year. Well, you know, I, I do think it's fun, and, and, and I really mean that. Uh, you said you don't do a lot of sports-oriented shows. Well. You know, when you work at a public university, and you don't do a lot of faith-based shows a lot of times, <laughs> and and you know, I've been interviewed hundreds of times, and 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 usually I'm I'm really comfortable in the environment, and and uh, not having seen Faith in Hometown, I I've seen two episodes, and I'm just humbled by the people that 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 have been on this show, uh, the Casa Advocate. Yeah, I mean, two weeks ago, right? Two weeks, four hundred children are in that program yeah. they have they the 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 work they're putting in to help those kids and 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 that's kind of you know everybody I really have a passion for football and, and, mm -hmm. and the reason I have that passion is everybody thinks that football coaches they want to win it, it it has almost nothing to do with the sport right it, it has well, to do with I personally feel that way yep. although I can tell you that if you don't <laughs> win you won't be around very long well, and that's and that's unfortunate absolutely. and I think that that's unfortunate because I've known some of the other I've right. known some of the former coaches I've been in sure. Southern for 13 years now sure. and I've known some of those coaches and I think some great men right. unfortunately the culture doesn't allow right. for you to lose forever you know, you gotta bring some. You gotta bring something to the table in terms of the game, but but I I just want to tell you that I'm very much aware that that a coach's life is about so much more than Absolutely. just putting up columns in a W column. And we understand that. It, and it's just like a, a priest or a minister. There's a lot of things that go into running a church. Sure. Um, but they're not doing it for the the offering plate. They're not yeah. doing it for that. If they're I were doing it for yeah. that, I'd be in big trouble. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and and that's the thing is is as I watched the show, we had the casa, and then you had the female minister, and 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 how, I I thought she how intelligent was she? I mean, oh, yeah. doctorate. Oh, yeah. 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 I, yeah. I, I I felt smarter just listening to her. <laughs> and and to be on the show, I'm just so humbled because everybody thinks that football coaches like you know, we want to do this to win. You know, the truth of the matter is, 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 and you mentioned it in two shows ago and we talked about it, but, but you're from Florissant, Missouri. Yeah. You know, I'm from Bridgeton, Missouri. They're right next to each other. North County. North County. No Cowboys. <laughs> uh, right here on our show this morning. Absolutely. And you know, it's funny you say that, is everybody who knows me 
knows that I'm from North County. Like, mm. they, they asked me, when I, when I was 18 years old and I went away to college, they'd ask me, they go, uh, are you from Missouri? I go, no, I'm from St. Louis. You know, <laughs> because that's what an 18-year-old mindset is. Sure. But as uh -huh. a 47-year-old, one of the reasons I took the job in Joplin was because I really believe, I've lived all over the country, that this is some of the best people in the United States. And, yeah. and, and I love raising my family in Carl Junction. I love the opportunity that we have at Missouri Southern. But the most important thing is helping these young men through their journey in college. And it's right. so different. And, and uh, you know, I, 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 I listen to Joel Steen a lot. And, mm -hmm. and, and prior to me coming in here, he, he said, uh, a friend is someone who walks in during trouble, not walks out. And, <laughs> and our guys, or earlier, earlier today, I had a meeting with two young men on our team who, uh, you know, great guys. If you met them on the street, you, you just think everything in their life is perfect, but it's not. And, and so, you know, we kind of, it's kind of our own little ministry. It's not what you do at, on any level, but, but we're just trying to, to, to help these guys uh, walk the path. Norman uh, General uh, Schwarzkopf, he had a uh, uh, saying, he said, uh, uh, when walking through a minefield, follow the explosions. And what he meant by that is, is we're trying to use our lives mm -hmm. as an example. Hey, don't make the mistakes we made. Let, <laughs> let me help you make 10 less mistakes yeah. than we did. And, and that's what we love to do. And, and I just, I, I love being a part of a football program. And, and that's when you talk about culture. That's what we're trying to create. We call, we say we want to create service-minded champion graduates. And, and that's, that's our great. goal when they walk out of our university. Yeah. That is great, and I and I do think you know uh, I think sports is a is a is a tremendous uh, laboratory in which to learn about life. Mm -hmm. I mean I really do. Sure. I, I I've long been a believer of that, uh, and one of the former Missouri uh, Southern coaches, actually the winningest coach in Missouri Southern history, Marianne Mitz, yeah. good friend of mine. Um, uh, she. Um, uh, she would, we, we, we talk about this often in terms of how when you're trying to uh, develop, you know, young people, uh, that there's just so much more to it than, than, you know, I mean, you're teaching them about basketball, she was, right. you're teaching them about football, sure. but they're learning about so many other things at the same time. And we're also helping them, obviously, if we're not doing our job about helping them succeed in the classroom so that they can also have skills for whatever they want to do and however they want to help change the world or make the world a better place down the line, we're not doing our jobs otherwise. And of course, you know, I, you know, you work in the, in the sports area, that I work in the, you know, Catholic campus ministry on the religious side of that, but, but we're about helping students reach their fullest potential Absolutely. in all those areas. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and the thing that's cool about football is that we have a hundred different guys from different places, different, mm -hmm. Southwest Missouri, St. Louis. We have big guys. Personalities in linemen are different than personalities in defensive backs. And, and, <laughs> yes. and it really, oh, it just, it, brings, yeah. <laughs> it does. And it brings such a different group. And, and we, we're trying to get them all to the same place. And it's, it's, it's just something powerful to be a part of. I was fortunate early in my career, I worked for a gentleman named Bill Fisk. And as a young coach, you know, you're learning. And uh, you know, sometimes a player would make a mistake. I, I get criticized sometimes because uh, why does he let that guy on his team? Or why does he let that guy on his <laughs> team? Well, I was taught by Coach Fisk. He said, Jeff, you know, you cut that guy if you want. He goes, go ahead and tell him you can't be on the team no more. I, I agree. What he did was bad. He goes, but just do me a favor. Before you do that, he goes, just tell me, if not us, who? You know, who, if, when we cut him, who's going to save him if he's not with us? And so, uh -huh. so I, I couldn't come up with a good answer. So Coach Fisk made, made us keep guys on the team. And, and you know, the, the reality is, is we say that we trick our players into an education through football because they came to the university through football. Uh -huh. yeah. I'm a graduate of Baker University, which is a United Methodist-based university. And one of the reasons I like Baker was they would lead a life in such a way that you'd kind of go, why is your life like that? And then you could talk to them about your faith. Uh -huh. and, and that's all we're trying to do with our guys is say, hey, 
just come this way. Let, let's, let's show you something and, and see if we can help you be a little better than me. And you know, I'm 47 years old. If, if, if my players have a better life than me at 47, then I feel like I did my job because mm -hmm. we laid them in that path. Sure. You know, it's interesting. I, uh, uh, you know, uh, when I was at Southeast, it was a Division One school, so you know, we just had a larger program and all those kinds of things. I've been uh, uh, amazed that I'm going to learn more about Division Two schools mm -hmm. and certainly about the MIAA than I ever, ever thought I would ever know. Right. Um, my 13 years now here at Southern. Um, one of the things that is common, though, whether it's a big school or a small school, is is that you know the athletes uh, have a tendency to cluster. All right. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting because, again, um, you know, uh, I, I get a big kick up, you know, like at the beginning of the year. Now, it's tougher for the football players at the beginning of the season because being on the road and doing all those things. But I always love it because I like it. You know, some of them, they'll come to church and all of a sudden they'll see each other from across the room. Right. And they're just like, oh, I didn't know you were Catholic. Oh, I didn't know you were Catholic. And, I was like, and so then the next week they're like together. Sure. You know, and, you know, and then we got, and I know you got a couple of coaches. You know, also, um, what one I've got to find out about because yeah. I, you know, I, I, I know the one, but I, I'm not sure that I know the other one. I probably know his face, but I don't probably know that he's yours. You do, do, you, do you have a Father Chaz? We do. Well, yeah. he actually texted me. He goes, I think I go to his service or when, when he's, yeah. he's been with him. Father Chaz is my yeah. associate. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and, there's, and we've also got a Father Jose, so where there's three of us. So right. You can, just depends on who's in the lineup <laughs> on a given Sunday. But, um, but I, uh, uh, but yeah, I always love the fact that those groups start to cluster. Mm -hmm. So there's like these little mini communities, even within the larger community, uh, because uh, you know they, you know, that's one of those things that, that pulls us together. Is you know we got when we find out that we share something in common as human beings, uh, you know, then we then we have a tendency to pull together to say, well, that's been part of my experience too, or so let's go through this part together, or let's do those things. I think it's kind of cool. Just like being from North County. Like I, being I, from North County. I felt exactly. at ease when we, when we <laughs> talk about Emo's Pizza and Toasted Ravioli. Oh, we could. We could. God knows. <laughs> I, you know, I gotta say, um, I, I, I really, I, I like some of the pizza here in Joplin. I really do, but I really do miss uh, St. Louis style pizza. Yeah. I yeah. think it's just it's it's how you grow up. You get used yeah. to certain you things, do. and and you know I haven't been in uh, St. Louis, you know, living there for you know since I was 19. So that's you know 30, you know, it's 28 years. Um, and I'm at 33 now. Right. Yeah, and, 33. But it's still home to mm -hmm. me, and oh, yeah. and and so it, you you get brought up a certain way, and, and there's certain things that are comfort to you and, mm -hmm. and so uh you know that's that's something that we always my wife's from st louis also and so, so where'd we she go to high school no well sorry. she went to high school with me so ah, there you go <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely all right well, that's so, all good so it, it's it was really neat to, uh you know as i went away and i heard you uh, talking about your call and mm -hmm. and uh and and how you travel and 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 i was humbled when i was listening to your show um that you talked about you wrestling with your faith. Oh yeah. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, like it was like a V8 moment. I was like this. I was <laughs> like, like he wrestles with his faith. How does he wrestle with? Like I wrestle every day. And well, mm -hmm. and and so to me, that's that's kind of what we try to do with our athletes is to, to understand we're all at different places mm -hmm. and different. And 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 I think that's what's cool about our culture is that that our coaches our coaches you know we're all in different places with our families some have young kids some right. have older kids and you know when i was young I, I thought if we had kids me and my wife we had three kids five kids they'd all be the same because it's the same parents yeah but they're not oh my <laughs> they're gosh, I'm totally. sure not. and so well, yeah. yeah well we're going to take a quick break and we're going to be right back my guest this morning is jeff sims who's the head football coach at missouri southern and so stick around we'll be right back you're watching Faith in Our Hometown on KSN-TV, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. Well, again, thanks for joining us again for another Sunday morning of Faith in Our Hometown. My guest this morning, Jeff Sims, who head football coach at Missouri Southern. Uh, Jeff, right before the break, you know, we were talking about you know trying to meet all the students where they are, talking about trying to meet our kids where they are, trying to meet all of our parishioners where they are. Uh, we take everybody where they're at, which is true, and then we try to put them together in some kind of a cohesive way to bring them together so that we can succeed together. 
How do you do that? Well, first off, in our program, we look at where we want to end up. Mm -hmm. right? and, and when we bring athletes into our university, into right. our program, they usually have options. Mm -hmm. So so what do you want to be when you're, you have gone through the program? When you grow up. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so in our program, what we want a Missouri Southern Lion to be is we want him to be a service-minded champion graduate. We feel like if he's been through our program and we can accomplish those three things, that we have put him in the right direction that he wants to be. To do that, um, early in my career, teams would break down on the word family and, and those things. But what does that mean? And, and we have a saying in our program that, how do you spell family, how do you spell love? You spell it T-I-M-E. All right. You have to spend time together. You have to be around each other. You don't show up for the date, you're not going to have a relationship very long. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. And, and, you know, as a coach, sometimes I've, I've been criticized because people see me coach a kid hard or something like that. Well, we've been fortunate. We played for four national championships, and I do coach kids hard. And, and the reason I'm able to coach them hard is because we have a relationship. You, a lot of times the fans only come and they just see the game. <laughs> they don't see that we're up with them six o'clock in the morning almost every day. That we have breakfast. We have a, we have a, a thing in our program that we call uh, breakfast check. And every morning we have breakfast at 7.15. We start the day off uh, with the announcements, what we're going to do. And then we finish the day with a joke and a quote of the day. Sometimes you need a little bit of laugh. And sometimes you need a little motivation. You know, um, <laughs> like every day. <laughs> absolutely. So, so we try to spend time with our guys. This past summer, um, you know, we, we helped our guys in school, in study halls. They had workouts. Uh, we got 67 of our players jobs in Joplin. That's one of the reasons that I feel like we can be a great program at Missouri Southern is because we have a tremendous area. You know, Joplin, Carthage, Carl Junction, all this areas allow us the opportunity that there's so many resources. We were able to employ 67 guys on our team this summer. So we were able to get them their jobs. And then we asked to do community service projects and, and something fun together. We did 878 hours of community service this past semester. Yeah. Because, but we have 100 guys on our team. So if you look at it, if, if they could just go do eight hours a piece, you know, how much are we affecting the community? And you start doing these things and, and they start getting involved in the community. The community starts mattering. They're doing those community service hours together. They're right. spending time together and you become a family and you fall in love with each other. And, and in a family, you can love each other. I mean, there's, there's good days, there's bad days. You know, yep. There's days you laugh, there's days you cry, there's days you're happy, there's days you're mad at each other. But we're all, as long as we're all trying to move in the right direction and, and develop through that process, that's what we're doing. And, 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 and I'll just be as honest with you as I can, is coaches changed my life. Um, grew up in St. Louis. You know, it, it was me and my mom. My mom's a hairdresser. If you're in the St. Louis area, you want to get a haircut, send me an email. I'll set you up. <laughs> you know, you know, and and you know, she at 18 sent me away to college and was like, "Good luck." <laughs> and and I kind of had to figure. That's what we did things in those days. <laughs> Absolutely, we yeah. did things in those I mean, days. Yeah. Nobody taught me how to fill out a FAFSA. I had to figure it out myself and applications and. And yeah, it was. I'm, I, you know, I, I just got to tell you, it's a completely different. Mm -hmm. I started 26 years ago in higher ed. Yep. Okay, started at, at Southeast at that point in time, and and uh, you know, nobody ever brought their parents to school then. It was just like right. you left your parents to come to school. <laughs> Right. And now, every kid in the world has got their parents right there in their pocket, in their hand, because they're bringing the phone with them. Absolutely. And so it's, it's completely changed. I'm on my third cohort of students, or probably my fourth cohort at this point in time, right. just in terms of the way that the students have changed in terms of doing some of that. It's I, amazing. And, and, and the reality is, is we have to evolve with them. Oh, yeah. We, have to, we talk about that all the time as a coaching staff. Hey, I know we used to do it this way, <laughs> but we have to do it this way. And, and, and yeah, it's just the way it works. When you can complain about it, but then you're ineffective. Well, what's I mean, your, what's what, your, good is, what good is complaining about yeah. it when, when still the goal that we're working for mm -hmm. is the same? It's like, how do we still bring everybody together? And, you know, and again, I, it, there's just certain challenges at different points in time. Absolutely. And we got to figure out how to overcome the challenges so that we can win. Absolutely. You know, and I don't mean just w in the W column either. I'm just talking about winning in general because, again, whether we're talking about that in terms of support or whether we're talking about that in terms of faith or whether we're talking about that in terms of bettering the community or bettering our lives or our families or whatever, 
uh, it's a win. We want it to be a win-win situation. We want everybody to succeed. Uh, and that's what that's what your you know that's what your football program is about. It's what Missouri Southern's about. It's what my church is about. I mean, I I 100% agree, and that's it. That's why it's so powerful to be a part of it. And and like I'm so honored to be on your show because we the, we're we're out there doing. We're 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 you're you're in there with the students, and you can see them growing, and you can see their lives changing, and 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 but it's it's not always just easy you oh know? <laughs> no no i don't think it's ever easy eh, i don't know there's some days right. that are easy some right. days you just walk in and, it, and we make it look easy right and then there's other days when we have to struggle but you know i think anything that is worth doing is worth doing poorly as well as it's worth doing well I, I i tell people all the time for every success story i have there's 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 nine stories where I felt like I wasn't being effective and it wasn't working and and I feel like like it's almost the God puts you in a position that you're almost like I'm ready to give up and then he he pulls you back in and shows you you know why you're there and what your purpose is and and uh, you know yeah. it's it's I, it's it's a blessing it's an honor I, I just I love what I do yeah so how many years you've been coaching now uh, this will be my 26th year coaching it'll be my 11th year as a head football coach um, and uh, you know I'm excited about it and, and this university is is incredible um, I know we haven't had the success as a football program mm -hmm. but there's so much success on the campus sure um, and yep. and so there's no reason that we can't do it as a football program and it, if we do it I don't think that the coaches prior to us, um, you know, we're, we're in a total different environment. Mm -hmm. it, it, life's all about timing. I've been very fortunate that I've had success, but I've also been very fortunate to be in the right places at the right time. And I feel like with the, the community has been tremendously supportive, the administration, I feel like things are coming together, uh, you know, and there's always, there's daily challenges, but I don't think those are challenges that can't be overcome, and I think it's an awesome thing to be a part of. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I I will tell you that I've I've you know I've I've loved my time at Missouri Southern. I you know, the difference between my time at Southeast and my time at Southern is very you know when I was at Southeast I was on campus 60 hours a week. Okay. Here I'm lucky to be on campus three or four hours a week okay. during the during the main part of the semester. Um, you know, uh, it's just that I've got too many other responsibilities, too many other duties over here. Uh, but then again, one out of every three students that went to Southeast was Catholic, and only one out of 25 that comes to Southern really? is Catholic. We got the lowest Catholic population of any uh, school in the state of Missouri uh, in terms of Catholic population. Well, I hired two. I brought two in. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so that's a good thing. I'm all for it. Thank you. Um, I used to say, you know, so I'm really, you know, you're, you're, uh, I, I used to laugh because. Um, that was always my big question for Marianne when she was recruiting for basketball, women's basketball. I said, you, but Marianne, did you recruit any Catholics? And she laughed and she said, you know I can't. I said, I know, I'm just teasing, I'm just teasing. But that's good, I like after the fact that you brought a couple more, this is a good thing. Um, but, um, you know, because we wanna wrap them in our community too. We want them to succeed and we wanna do all that we can to help to support them. And I know that's one of the, the great things about Southern. I love the community. Mm -hmm. I love the community. Uh, because the community is supportive. The community does rally around people. And I and I love that fact. Um, it it is a it's you know it's a it's kind of like a great uh, you know you use the word family, mm -hmm. and, and Southern is like a great big family uh, because they're just we're we're that small that we can kind of feel that way uh, together, and I kind of like it, you know. Well, you talked about you've been here for 13 years, and in 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 my career we're moved around a lot, and uh, you come to an area like Joplin, and I think sometimes people don't understand how special they are <laughs> this I, I I've been fortunate I've lived all over the country and I chose this opportunity because I do believe that they're great people here um, I happen to live in Carl Junction and I have people come up to me all the time how do you like Carl we love it I mean my yeah. we've we, everybody's been so welcoming and and yeah. and, and uh, even my children my children are 18 17 and 14 Okay. And it's it's hard to move at that age, and and while my kids try to put on the right attitude and do everything, <laughs> they they have their days. You mean you're going to tell me your kids aren't perfect? <laughs> wow. Not even close. Wow. Uh, but they, they, I, I'm not even close to perfect, so they're better. That's than me. okay. They're right there. There you go. <laughs> so um, so but I, one of my children, 
struggled with the move a little bit. And one day he uh, came out of school and he got in the car and he, <sighs> his mom goes, what? These people really are nice here. <laughs> he, he really didn't want to like it. They really are nice. Oh, wow. That's tough. Yep. Tough. Better luck next time. You know, find, find some jerks to live with, but this is good. Well, uh, I'm talking with Jeff Sims, the head football coach at Missouri Southern State University. And, and I do think, Jeff, I'm really wishing you the best uh, of everything this year. Uh, you know, uh, you're you know, relatively new to the community, been here less than a year. Um, but uh, I think you're going to continue to enjoy the community. You'll you'll get to experience, uh, uh, you know, the, the 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 what we consider the fun side of you know of of you know the football program, which is actually when you finally start playing your season sure. and doing all that stuff. I mean, that's all the rest of it's the hard work that goes into it. But the real fun, you know, is actually it's when you finally day. get to play game day. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, I hope that uh, you know that your career here is long and illustrious. I hope that you can build that winning culture. I hope you can build a winning community with your players. Uh, I think it's one of those things where, um, uh, again, like in so many things, what you put into the community is what you're going to get out of it. And I know you've been putting some in, so I fully well expect that you're going to get plenty to, to go along with it. Well, yeah. I really appreciate that. Thank yeah. you very much, and I'm excited. Well, we are going to be right back after this Mercy Minute. The whole purpose of screening uh, is to catch people who have a significant smoking history early enough where we can do something about it and potentially improve the duration of life. The minimum recommendation for screening is 30 pack years. So usually people who've smoked more than 30 pack years are the ones that we're screening. If we start screening yearly with low dose CT scans, we can reduce the risk of death from lung cancer by 20 to 25 percent. Stage one, two, and three cancers potentially can be cured. When it becomes stage four, the possibility of a cure falls significantly. Well, you know, once again, it's one of those mornings where I'm so happy and so proud to be a part of this greater Joplin community. We've got so many things to recommend us. We got so many things that we're so blessed with. And one of those is where I have in Missouri Southern, uh, right here in our own backyard. Um, I, I, I love my time at Southern. I think it's a great place to be. Uh, we talked a little bit this morning about the football program uh, and about the start of a new year uh, with a you know new football coach and all kinds of hope and promise. Isn't that what the beginning of the school year should be about? Is hope and promise. Uh, let's continue to look out for each other. Let's continue to watch for each other this week. Let's continue to create a winning culture because if we continue to put into that culture all that we can, we will continue to receive from that culture uh, continued and many blessings. So let's keep each other in prayer for another week. Uh, let's continue to um, uh, you know, support uh, our university uh, right here in our hometown. Uh, and we'll see you next week right here for Faith in Our Hometown. Thanks for watching. Faith in Our Hometown can be seen Sunday mornings at 6.30 and 9 a.m. on KSN. Brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin.